Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Elizabeth Sharon Ann Bible Study. My name's Debbie, and we do this every morning at 8.30 Central Standard Time. So glad that you have popped on here to, to uh, study and, and just chat in the messages. If you're, if you're new to uh, this study, just put your name in there and so we can we can respond. Um, also like this page and um, I don't see anybody on yet. So maybe maybe I'll just wait a few minutes until I see somebody appear on there. Okay, good, 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 good. Somebody's on, yay. Okay, so and if you would, Besides liking this, go to YouTube and like and subscribe to Elizabeth Sharon Ann. Um, do you have any prayer requests? Put your prayer request in there. If you have any praise reports, add that. We want to we want to celebrate with you also. So good morning, Donna. Glad that you're on with me today. Okay, today is normally the day that Elizabeth and I do this together. Good morning, Sharon. Um, and so let me read my devotion to you today. This is so me, because like I say, I was preparing to jointly do this with Elizabeth and, and she, she wasn't able to be here today. This says, this is a prayer to Jesus. I want to trust you enough to let things happen without constantly striving to predict or control the outcome. This is so me, I, I practice. I like, to, I like to know how the day's gonna go. So sometimes I just need to relax and, re and refresh myself in the light of your everlasting love. Even though your love light never dims, I'm often unaware of your radiant presence. I realize that when I focus on the future, mentally rehearsing what I will do or what I will say as I did as I was studying for this, I'm seeking to be self-sufficient. Did you ever think about that? Have you got ready to be in a conversation with somebody and you've already practiced and rehearsed also? Is it because you were trying to be self-sufficient? I mean, that's I've done that many a times. This is a this attempt to be adequate without your help is a subtle sin, so common that it slips past me unnoticed. Man, so then whenever I saw that she was not going to be able to join me this morning, I, all of that just made so much sense. You know, we try to we try to do things on our own without without even talking to Jesus about it, don't we? Okay, so let's get into this. There are so many great things to read today. And, and obviously, I'm not going to be able to touch on all of them. So you're going to have to go in there and, and read it and study it also. We're doing Deuteronomy 29 and Deuteronomy 30. And it is really, really good. Moses is talking to the Israelites. And he says, these are the terms of the covenant the Lord commanded Moses. Well, he didn't say that. I, this, is the, this is just the verse. That the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites while they were in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant he made with them on Mount Sinai. Now see, at this point, the generation of unbelief has died, and now it's an opportunity for the generation of faith. Moses summoned all of the Israelites and said to them, you have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did. And isn't that funny that he has to tell them and remind them that because we can see with our eyes, we can hear with our ears. And sometimes we still struggle with belief. And I don't understand that. Why is that? Verse four says, but to this day, the Lord has not given you minds that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. See, they saw the plagues. They saw the death of the firstborn. They saw the Red Sea parted. 
the Egyptian armies destroyed. They saw victories by prayer, miracle after miracle, and it didn't change their heart. Verse five, for 40 years, 40 years, I mean, that's a career. They have had a career of, of grumbling. I wonder who the, who the CEO of the grumblers was. It says, I led, led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. Wow. And I think that my shoes are wore out in no time. Now, mine are, because this is not a supernatural thing for me today. This was supernatural for them. Because if you can just imagine, millions of people are walking and on this journey. Did they ever stop and think, man, if the first 500 picked all the apples off the tree, I'm not going to get any. I mean, there's just so many things that you could even think about, but God provided for them through this 40 years, and each of these things we're getting ready to talk about has got a spiritual counterpart for their, in, our, in our lives, and I'm going to give you the, the scriptures I found for that. So the clothes in the wilderness of this world, God provides clothes for the us. See Revelation 3.18. And shoes. He gives us shoes of peace. Look at Ephesians 6.15. That's part of the armor of God. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he provided for you so you would know that the Lord is your God. He gives us bread and wine. Look at 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. When we came here, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out to fight against us, but we defeat, defeated them. In him, we conquer our enemies. Look at Romans 8, 37. We took their land. We can take the land of our spiritual enemies. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. And, and part of that is the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. So it is not against flesh and blood. It is spiritual warfare. And that's where we, we pray. That's why we want you know, submit your prayer request, request. Well, that was almost hard to say. And, and let us all join together. Let us, let us be in that group of like mind people that, that are praying for the will of God. Therefore, obey the terms of this covenant so that you will prosper in everything you do. Sounds easy enough, doesn't it? Just, just obey. Why is obeying so hard? Probably because we can see and we can hear and we can still be uncertain and not necessarily have the faith that we need. We need to focus on building our faith. And then these are the parties to the covenant. Verse 11, it says, all of you tribal leaders, elders, officers, and all men of Israel start standing are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God. Your little ones are with you. Everybody are with you. You are standing here today to enter into the covenant of the Lord. And the Lord is making this covenant, including curses. And then verse 14, but you are not the only ones with whom I'm making this covenant with curses. I am making this covenant both with you who stand here today in the presence of the Lord, our God, and also the future generations who are not standing today. So all of his promises in this are for us too. Let's see, I wanna get, get going on over here. Let, I, when I highlighted verse 29, um, 
the Lord our God has no secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them. Because see, he hasn't revealed it to us. But we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. God is bigger and smarter than we all are or will ever be. It's so, it's so important to to focus on his word read it every day there's just too much happening in this world right now for us just to sit back and and curl up in a ball and 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 just think oh it's just you know what what's the saying going to hell in a handbasket well that's where we just we we get out of that we take a stand and we stand firm on God's promises he, re, he does reveal some things to, to man. And this revelation is meant to say something to us. So when you got into your Bible today or yesterday, and as you're reading it, and if something just tugs at your heart, you need to write that down. He is saying something to you. God's revelation goes beyond the generations. Everything that I'm praying right now today for my children, my grandchildren, and it's going for my grandchildren that I'll never know. The ones that, the great, 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 greats, my prayers are floating through and it will be touching them. And someday, somewhere, some, some kiddo is gonna, is gonna feel the prayers that I prayed for that one. So don't miss an opportunity for that. Chapter 30. In the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses I have listed for you, when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, take to heart all of these instructions. You see, Israel's history has been a legacy of blessings and curses. And God calls those scattered to remember the promises. And then I like, I like this, how it starts out in two. If at that time, I always circle the if and the wins. If at that time you and your children return to God and obey with all your heart and your soul and the commands I've given you, then your God will restore your fortunes. Um, and I'm, and I'm going to jump on down. Yeah, I've got too many, too many, too many things to, to talk about. Look at verse six. The Lord, your God, will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul and so you may live. God's promises stands they're, they're they stood back then and they stand today the final aspect of the promise to regather israel god will restore them spiritually and you can see ezekiel 36 26 through 27 and paul promised all of israel will be saved romans eleven twenty six, 26 and see matthew 23 and uh, verse 39 for Jesus's words. We, we all stand in these promises, folks. It says that in verse nine, the Lord, your God will then make you successful in everything you do. See, when we so follow his will, it may not also not be a smooth road, but it's only because he's, he's wanting to increase our, our strength, our faith, and everything that goes along with that. Verse 10 says, the Lord your God will delight in you if you obey his voice. Keep his commands. See, whenever, whenever he tells you to go speak to somebody, witness to somebody, give your testimony to somebody, don't hold back. Because there's somebody in, whether it is at, uh, in your Sunday school class, your church, or a retreat, or maybe it's just within a group of friends at a cookout. Somebody there needs to know how God has worked in your life, 
how, how it has changed you. It's a life-changing testimony for somebody that needs to listen. Verse 11 says, this command I'm giving to you today is not too difficult for you. It's not beyond your reach. See, he doesn't give us things that's too hard, but he gives us things that, that he wants to walk through us to guide us every step of the way. He didn't say, Debbie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you do this and, and, and step in for Elizabeth when she's gone and not give you some insight. You may stumble. Your, your computers and all of your information technology may, may flip you sideways sometime, but I still want you to persevere and move forward because somebody needs to hear the word. <clears throat> and then verse 15. Now listen, today I'm giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. What in the world? How, you know, is that, is that a hard choice to make? It says, for I command you this day to love the Lord your God and keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter and occupy. See, folks, we are about to enter into a new land and a new era, a new season of, of our lives. We also have this choice because everything important is a choice. And just because it's hard doesn't mean you stay away from it. Step into those hard times because that's when you're going to dig in deeper into the word and in your prayer life will completely change when you're into that hard season. Verse 19, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Then underline this one. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. I mean, he's given you all of this information. He has all of this encouragement, all of the blessings and curses that, that he does. And he, and he gives you the answer, choose life. We choose life today for whatever situation you're going through right now. You know, it's temporary. It's not gonna last because you're just walking through you're walking through the desert. And as you walk through that desert, you're drinking and thirsting of, of what God has for you. And you are, you are stacking your experiences up so you can share that testimony with somebody. Okay, Luke 11, 37 through 12, 7. As Jesus was speaking, one of the Pharisees invited him home for a meal. This is so good. Now, and I and I read this, and this is this is another good one to remember. Pharisees are a reminder that every group has its own tendencies towards error, its own temptations and its own failures. So Jesus went in and sat at the table. His host was amazed to see that he sat down without first performing the hand washing ceremony required by Jewish custom. Oh, my word. Jesus didn't do what they all do. Then the Lord said to them, you Pharisees are so careful to clean outside of the cup of the dish, but inside you're filthy, full of greed and wickedness. Fools. He called them fools at the table. Didn't God make the inside? as well as the outside. So clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor and you will be clean all over. Did you, and one thing I got today, which you may, you probably saw, is it, they were shocked that he didn't do the hand-washing ceremony. But they didn't say anything to him. He read their minds. He knew what they were thinking and they didn't even have to say anything. 
And the crazy thing is, is, is man-made laws are, are bizarre. So the hand-washing ceremony is they took a, like using an egg, one and a half egg shell full of water. They poured it over their fingers and let it run down both hands. So they apparently needed help. Then they rubbed their wrists together. Then they had somebody pour that same amount down their hands the opposite way with their hands down to rinse it off. Really, did that do a whole lot? I, you know, probably knocked off some dust, but you know what? It was a, it was not like your mama taught you how to wash your hands. This was a ritual that everybody was supposed to do. And then we go into the woes. What sorrow awaits you or what woe awaits you, Pharisees? You're careful to tithe, but you ignored the justice and love of God. Then the other one, what woes awaits you, Pharisees? For you love to sit in the seats of honor in the synagogues and receive respectful greetings. What sorrow awaits you? And it goes on and on. He Jesus is talking to them about, about, you know, their practices and their beliefs. And it's in, you know, it's just, it's their, their hearts are not in it. Their actions, they're, they're, they're acting really godly and religious, but their hearts are not showing it. Um, and then 47, it says, what sorrow awaits you? You build monuments for prophets, for the prophets, your own ancestors killed a long time ago. But in fact, you stand as witnesses who agree with what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets and you join their crime by building the monuments. Okay, so look at verse 50. This one, this one got me. As a result, this generation will be held responsible for the murder of all God's prophets in the creation of the world. Okay, so I'm going to go back and just read half of that. As a result, this generation will be held responsible. Okay, so what, what will our generation be held responsible for? Are we going to be held responsible for the immoral behavior? that's going on around us or just for simply standing back and and watching it happen because you know i guess some of us think that if it's not happening on our doorstep in our yard in our neighborhood you know it'll never happen here but it does doesn't it and so as i was i was i was reading that and i thought now what what is it that we can do? We just went, had a local election yesterday. What am I going to be held responsible for, for this generation? So I feel like in, in what, in what it was on my heart was that our, our voices can be heard in elections, regardless of what it is, because li listen, like I said about the Pharisees, every group has their own tendencies towards error every group. So if you lean towards either way on political parties, every group has its tendencies to do right, wrong, or whatever. But what our responsibility is, is to research. What does this law entail? What does this person believe? I don't care if they're a Democrat or Republican. What I want to know is, do they love Jesus? Do they do they believe in God's word? Because, you know, if they love, love is the greatest of all. If they love, then everything else is going to fall into place, folks. What are we going to be held responsible for? I don't want to be held responsible for things that I see going on. My ability to put my thumbprint on it is to, is to do what I can. And that, and that for me, until I figure something else out, is to, to let my voice be heard in voting. Okay, so I'm off my soapbox. Uh, chapter 12. 
Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling around and stepping on each other. This was an undisciplined crowd, folks. They were, they were, they were pushing and shoving and, and probably, probably wanting to have a political ruler that's just gonna come free them from Roman occupation. They are, they just, they can't wait for all of this to happen. And Jesus turned first to his disciples. He, with this crowd around him, he turns to them and warns them, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. See, a little bit of hypocrisy can be like a little bit of arsenic. You know, it infects everything, like a little bit of yeast. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. But you know what? We we have we we hear about all of these secrets in the in the political arena right now. I don't know what's right and what's wrong. Just all we do know is this is what's right. And this tells us what's wrong. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. See, you know, it's because it's in your heart. And if we practice in the light, not saying or thinking the things that we shouldn't be thinking about, we won't have to worry about what comes out of our mouths in the dark. <clears throat> Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do anything else to you after that. But I'll tell you whom you fear, that's fear God, who has the power to kill you. I read a story about a, a pastor, and this was hundreds of years ago, and he was told to quit preaching, and he continued preaching. He was, he was warned, and that he was taken to jail because he didn't do what they told him to do. Now they are going to, he, he's going to be killed. He's going to be put on a stake and burned alive. And his, his wife and his kids, I think he had five kids, and they, were, they, they all gathered together with, with him and, and prayed. And, and he, he didn't show any fear. They came and got him and took him away. They led him by foot to, to where that, this stake was, where they were going to burn him alive. And as he's, as he's marching along, people are coming and they're saying, Pastor, you, you know, we listened to you, we heard you. And they were, they were so glad to get to see him one last time. And as he was walking, he took his shirt off and gave to somebody. He was singing. He was, he was, he was happy because you know what he said? He was getting ready to go see his father. He took his shoes off and gave it to somebody. He took, he, he left on his undergarments, but everything else that he had on his person, he gave away as he got there. And he was, he was still happy when they put him on the stake. He never, he never made a sound. He never screamed or anything in torture. He was going to see his father. And I thought, oh my goodness, this man was was not afraid of people that would kill the body. He was going to see his father. Okay, <clears throat> Psalm 78. Asaph is retelling the history of the Jewish nation from the time of slavery in Egypt in this, in this psalm. It was told over and over to each generation so they would not forget God and make the same mistakes. See, that's why it's so important to, to gather your children around, to, to give them uh, oh, family history, I guess is the best I can say. Family history of where God performed miracles in your life. We read the Bible to them. But you know what, isn't it nice to tell them how, you know, grandma was almost, you know, gone when God breathed back into her because she, her mission on earth wasn't done. Can, isn't it awesome to tell your kids of, how, of the healing, of the near misses of everything and God stepped in? The, the Holy Spirit was there and gave you discernment to, to speak or not to speak. 
<clears throat> oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I'm saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we've heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. So see, let your stories be trickled down to your, your children. Let them know how God has worked through your life, through your whole entire life. Don't, don't hide the, the ugliness. Let them, I mean, let them, share that. Share what you want to of that. But just the whole bottom line to that story is God redeemed you and he kept you because he's got stuff for you to do. Proverbs 12, 19 through 20. Truthful words stand the test of time. Oh, look what we're reading. These are truthful words, folks. Lies are soon exposed. You know, they can't find anything wrong in this. There, there are so many people that's tried to find how this isn't true. And they've, they've never found it. Deceit fills hearts that are plotting evil. Joy fills hearts that are planning peace. That's what we do. Focus on peace. Whatever you've got going on today, focus on peace. Don't walk into a room and just start looking for whatever is the negative, the, the stuff that you, you think, you, because you've rehearsed it all day. Just in case if somebody said something ugly to you, you've already rehearsed what you're going to say, right? Well, let's erase that. And let's walk in with, <clears throat> with what godly words you're going to share to them. And so thank you for joining me today. And um, Elizabeth dad, Elizabeth's dad has been in the hospital. And I, I, I can't read the messages this morning, but I will here in a minute. And I'm, I'm thinking that you know, that's probably why she's not here right now. And so you uh, keep Elizabeth in your prayers and, and you know what, just pray for this world because it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one right now for so many. And so we'll see you back tomorrow. Love you and dream big. Bye-bye.